It is March 25th, 2020, the Wednesday Night Wars. This is Wrestling Inc. Talking about Dynamite, talking about NXT. I'm Glenn Rubenstein, joined by Matt Morgan and Justin Labar. Uh, Matt, what did you think of tonight's shows? Both without a crowd featuring wrestling action, and really uh, the first head-to-head of this new era with no audience. Yeah, before we begin, I just want to uh, uh, apologize to the fans that I couldn't do the show from in my home. Oh. Uh, having, having a rough time with my kid at the moment. Uh, he's having one of his, his meltdown episodes, but he'll be fine. Um, <laughs> it was pretty bad today, um, but he'll be fine. Um, but uh, I was able to watch both shows, and uh, I thought this was really, I thought it was a really good night. I really, as usual, dug AEW, though, a little bit more. Yeah, Justin, what'd you think tonight? Uh, AEW and NXT, I believe both were live tonight doing their broadcast without an audience. Yeah, I mean, both uh, did, as, did as well as they could. They you know, gave us a, a lot of in-ring action, so props to all the performers uh, for, just, you know, that's not, a, that's not an easy situation not to have uh, instant live feedback. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, AEW had a little, has a little bit more cliffhangers. They have, they have more interesting things going on right now. I mean, NXT, really, I mean, NXT doesn't have a takeover to build to at the moment because that's been scrapped, it seems, uh, with with all the changes to Mania Weekend. So, um, you yeah, both shows were good, had some high points, but, uh, yeah, I mean, AEW still, they, they didn't do the, the other wrestlers at ringside, but they still would cut away to them backstage and let that sound come in while the match was happening. So at least it gave you some kind of reaction smart. sound. Yeah, yeah, it was smart. So. And they also yeah. did other little things, having different people on commentary, yeah. having uh, uh, Jimmy Havoc get on the headset during the match at certain times. There were some really cool things that happened in the show tonight on AEW. We'll get into it. The coolest thing of the night for me, and no one will have predicted this, would be my favorite thing of the night, was Cody Rhodes taking a bottle of water to his eye, selling his eye tonight. I thought that was <laughs> awesome. Such a small little detail, yet so freaking cool. It's great storytelling. Yeah, uh, there was a lot, of, lot to like, I think, in both shows tonight. Um, interesting that NXT finished before AEW went off the air tonight. I think that's the first time that's happened. See, I was so glued to AEW at the very end there. I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't even pick up on that, the timing of it. Well, it was interesting. I think they went out with the bang. So uh, it's pretty much confirmed that's Killer yeah. Cross, right? With uh, that last promo they went off the air with. Looks like him. Yeah. 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 So let's dive into AEW Dynamite first. Tonight, we were at Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida, and we had Tony Schiavone welcoming uh, us with Cody and Kenny Omega at commentary and uh, opening with Cody versus Jimmy Havoc tonight with Cody picking up a win, um, over uh, pinfall win over Jimmy. What did you think of this match, Matt? Great match. I thought it went on a little long, but uh, uh, a little long in the tooth. But uh, nonetheless, great, great match. I love Jimmy Havoc matches now. Uh, I think his stuff is so – it's very different in what he does. He's not just some trash wrestler who just sits there and staples people's eyebrows all day. Like, he does – they've done a really good job of explaining him better than what I first thought who he was. That's who I used to think he was. Just some dude who just did, you know, crazy high spot yeah, – not high spots, but – death spots, if you will, these daring type things and stapling people's eyebrows. Um, but that's not what he does. Uh, he picks a body part. He picks it apart to true, you know, British style wrestling, uh, catch wrestling. But like he, 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 he dissects that body part and he has very, very inventive ways of how he works that said body part. And I'm always entertained by his matches. I have been since I would say the third, third time watching him. I started to grow and to become a fan of him. I, I like him. Yeah, the match, well, it did get a little bit longer than I would have expected. Uh, Cody gave Jimmy more than I expected him to. Definitely. Uh, you know, and this was, a, you know, this is an opportunity. This, this, show, this was not the original show planned. I mean, obviously, they've delayed blood and guts. Um, they're basically using talent that either lives in Florida or can drive to Florida. Um, you know, hence why Tony's on commentary and Jim Ross is in there and Excalibur's not there and a lot of other people that we didn't see on the show tonight. Uh, so this is a chance for Jimmy Havoc to, to get maybe an opportunity on television time that he wouldn't have otherwise had, and, and, and Cody gave him some stuff. So overall, you know, good good opening match. Hey, AEW, don't be scared to call your big brother here. I lived an hour and a half away. Why don't you tell them you will, uh, on your own dime, <laughs> travel there to wrestle and put Orange Cassidy over in a one-on-one -on -one match? <laughs> okay. Seriously. I, I, I will grab his hand, 
throw it on my own deck and eat a choke slam. <laughs> Justin, you've got the connections. Like, let's get this out there that Matt Morgan's willing to come and be enhancement talent I'm, to put uh, Orange Cassidy over. I'm pretty sure if Matt Morgan wants to get himself an AEW ring, Matt Morgan can work that on his own connections. I don't think he needs me for that one. I think it's better with a third party. I think Matt, you know, I mean, this I'll is take, a compliment. I'll take 10% as your agent, Matt. I'll take 10% if, if you want me to, to, to try to make the booking happen. I mean, this and, is a compliment. Oh, yeah. And we have we also have that sweet PWI top five hundred of the last decade yes. that we can really run up my price on, right? Uh, yeah. Justin, yeah. I-, I was telling them the other night, Justin. Somehow your boy here wound up number seventy three of the top five hundred wrestlers of the last decade from two thousand nine to two thousand nineteen. You did, dude. I retired in two thousand fourteen. Wow. <laughs> somebody, somebody I'm the- complaining. Somebody in the PWI liking some Matt Morgan. They must be watching this podcast, and they they, they think fondly of you. <laughs> Buddy Barlow, two dollars super chat. Havoc is showing. He's more of a technical. Yes, definitely, Buddy Barlow. I agree with that comment. I think it's I good. Agree. It differentiates him from uh, Darby Allen. Um, you know, not just like the crazy guy. Actually, AEW's yes. got a lot of crazy guys. So I think with Havoc, we're showing the but technical. They're so, they're, they're so different, and I, he does little funny things too on. Uh, Sammy Guevara's uh, YouTube channel. Every every episode, he's like in the background, like dissecting some dude and like beating the crap out of him. And every episode, it's just so funny. They don't like cut to it either. It's just always in the background. It's funny, but uh, I, I dig him. I, I I did not like him at first. You know, I, I'm a body guy a little bit, a little bit of a body guy fan. Um, you know, so his physique isn't you know what I usually end up cheering for, right? But uh, he's won me over big time. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, after that match, we got that Jake Roberts video message shot by uh, Fireside tonight out in the woods. What did you think of that promo? Interesting, cool, different, outside the box, um, all that, all the above. Um, love that he ended it with trust me. I didn't think they needed to zoom in on his eyes like that. I didn't think hmm. it was needed because you could see his eyes from the normal shot that they were shooting it from. And it's a subtlety that's his calling card. So it, instead of leaving that as his, you know, the, the, the outshot of his face, like from, the, from like this, from, from where my camera is to my face, you know, there was no need to go, oh, by the way, his eyes are really not trustworthy. <laughs> Look, you can't trust his eyes. Um, <laughs> do, do, do you know what I- <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i mean like jake's whole gimmick is the subtleties man that are so pronounced and loud it's amazing it's, he's amazing but uh let me ask you guys this did you feel like he kind of discord his wife there but not remembering her name as a shoot i felt like a shoot to me yeah <laughs> or or the fact that she re- he referred to her as <laughs> bill's monica I, I i didn't understand that one he was he was really? referring maybe it's Caesar's oh, Cleopatra. Yeah. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. It just hit me as soon as I said it. Okay. Yeah, because he, he was right. saying maybe she's uh, Caesar's Cleopatra, maybe she's Bill's Monica. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean this was a good. I mean, I, I, I Jake promos. I'll watch I, this. This is a huge selling point for me to watch AEW every week because I want to see a Jake the Snake promo. Um, and yeah. classic Jake, he did again what he what he what he is masterful at, which is he never needs to raise his voice because you will listen to him. That's great. <sighs> The challenge is, though, we're talking about Jake. We're not talking about Archer. You know, but you know what? No. Well, to be fair, I mean, they didn't. And then, then we start talking about Archer in a second when they go back to Cody on commentary. Yeah. Lance is getting over by Jake's representation. I mean, and even that even that quick one that we praised last week with that 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 that, that Fight Club in the woods. Yeah. And Lance. I mean, like, like Lance. Killer. Lance is getting over. He's getting over by Jake's representation, and then Lance is going to get over when he gets in the ring next week. So. Yeah, no, he, no, he, no offense to Lance, he can't cut no promo like Jake the Snake can for him. Right. Jake yeah. the Snake made him look like a huge star, I thought, with how he was talking about him tonight. Yeah, no, it was great. It was fantastic. Um, we followed that with another banger of a promo from Darby Allen that a vignette tonight. Yeah. Um, Dude, somebody just give him money to make a movie. Let him do all of the creative for AEW. It's such a unique style. It's so good. The stuff with the inner circle I, masks, the fire. Can I just say something? It's yeah. a little bit off the topic, but AEW, if you're watching, you guys need to sign Gentleman Jervis. Sign Gentleman Jervis. If you guys don't know who he is, YouTube him. Wrestling purists are going to not like it, but 
it's it's little Orange Cassidy wheelhouse ish. I would oh, say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jervis Combelly. Yes, I've seen him. Before. And it's so funny. I think he's awesome. But it's it does seem like it would fit. No, hey, it's all good. Well, you could tell them that you could put him over Matt when you go to do your uh, match with Orange Cassidy. <laughs> which Justin, here's why you need to hook it up, Matt. And I mean, this is a huge compliment. You're game for a lot of stuff, but I think you're not the type of guy who would ever call a company and be like, hey, could you hook me up? I want to do this. I don't think you're the kind of guy necessarily to ask so much and try and put yourself over. I think it's almost better if a third party orchestrates and said, hey, you should ask Matt Morgan this. I feel like that that's a little more your strength. I, th I feel you almost are a little humble at times, which is funny to say to a politician, because I don't think you would put it out there yourself. Well, no, so, I don't wrestle. I, I don't wrestle no more. But, but if they're fast. in need, if they are in need, you know, I'm only hour, slightly under two hours away from Jacksonville, right? Yeah. Oh, come on! You've yes. map quested that shit. You're like, I've seen exactly. <laughs> I know where it is. I know where the turnoff <laughs> is. I know where I'll stop on the way at the rest stop. <laughs> so, the difference between you and I and the rest yeah. of you is, is Matt does not think about wrestling any other time of day whatsoever until it's time to watch these shows. Which is great. That's a little bit, just a, just, 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 just a tidge, just a little tidge. Busy right now. A tad. A little. Just a little. How's stuff going? How's stuff going in Longwood? Our res our, our, everybody from our residents to our businesses, our business owners, they're all doing their part and doing exactly what they should be doing. Staying yeah. at home, closing their doors, keeping social distancing, and they no backlack whatsoever from it. Like they're, they're all taking it serious and it's been awesome. It's fantastic. Uh, after that Darby promo, we got Darby Allen versus Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford. Um, what'd you think of the match, Matt? Awesome. I yeah. thought it was really good. I thought it was strong. Very strong showing. Yeah. Quick work. Uh, but Allen looked good. Cody put uh, Darby over on commentary. Uh, Justin, what'd you think? Yeah, again, really nothing much more to say. It's just a solid match. Yeah. I, I like seeing Penelope on screen. I mean, she, as we said last week when she was in the ring, she's got a, a star, kind of star factor to her. So She does. She definitely does. Jake Hager versus Chico Adams. Uh, Jake winning via referee stoppage after the match. Moxley coming out and brawling with Hager. Um, yeah. So is this is this the build now? Is it going to be Hager versus Moxley for the AEW title? Seems like what it. did I, what did I miss? Why did he come out and start brawling with Jake Hager? Well, they beat him up. Uh, what was oh, it? A week right. before last. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, and you know, by process elimination, you got uh, you, know, you got some of the other guys from the inner circle who are dealing with uh, the elite. So it's kind of like you know, just to perish, it, it isolates Jake Hager off to do the singles feud with with Moxley and. I mean, really, they, I mean, you know, Hager's a huge name they have that they haven't done much. I mean, we didn't even see him wrestle until just a few weeks ago. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I certainly would buy putting him as a as the next challenger for, for Moxley. Yeah. So we got this Dark Order promo, Brody Lee at dinner. Um, Justin, how many Vince McMahon references did you count <laughs> in what Brody did tonight in this promo? Yeah, this is uh, another uh, event. I mean, the uh, eating of the steak, uh, media, uh, nice and medium rare at least. And he has the suit on, looks like Vince. And then, of course, the to cap it all off, the sneezing, <laughs> which, and you know, it's 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 an old Vince thing that Vince hates sneezing. He hates people around him sneezing. And, you know, he puts up his shield. Uh, but in this time, in this time we're living in, that's actually a you know, it's a baby face thing. You sneeze, get out of the room. I don't want your your COVID nineteen. So uh, it, it was, uh, and I and I know it wasn't just me. Obviously, all social media lit up that. Um, another week he's made some so that's what it looks like it looks like it looks like the dark order is heading towards being a parody of the dark order represents uh, uh a, a cult light existence in wwe huh. yeah it's uh i don't know i mean matt is it a little too billionaire ted at this point i mean to be taking AEW to be taking shots at vince specifically with this yeah I mean, I'm sure he's got a ton of angst built up in him. I know what that feels like. When I went to TNA at first, I felt the same. Um, but what he's going to learn eventually is it, it's, it, it, it leaves your body very quickly. You know, yeah. any kind of frustration and whatnot, you know. Um, 
So like people do that because they've got a lot of angst generally built up inside them about how they left or how they weren't used properly. No yeah. offense. There's not one WWE superstar on planet Earth that will tell you they felt 100% perfect with how they were booked in WWE. Oh. There's no such thing. Every wrestler has, has to some degree. Now, certain wrestlers have better cases and arguments than others, i.e. this guy right here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm saying, though. Nobody, I always remember that, that, like, even when I left, I remember there's so many other wrestlers that had similar stories to me. Like, hey, you know, like, they never really put you to your full potential, yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, I always say, like, you know, get in line. Get in line, Matt. Many of others, this is happened to do your job. To go out there now and prove them wrong. Prove them wrong that they used you wrong by going elsewhere and, and make a bigger name for yourself and show them what they could have been using with you. That's what you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and Brody's already doing that. I mean, good Lord. He's so good. Yeah, and I mean, I think, you know, I think, you know you, Matt's right. It's all about, you know, who has a better case. You know, and for Brody's case, it's, you know, um, you know, I got I got a brief chance to work around him in 2011, and he, you know, he was battling knee injury, but he was trying to fight through, it and he and he wanted to get there, and he did. He got he got to WWE around I think 2012, you know, but he he spent the you know next eight years, um, you know, seeming like a lot of opportunities missed. There's a story of you know Vince wanted Luke Harper to have a, a southern accent, and he couldn't do a southern accent well enough for Vince, so Vince would dismiss him for a while, and it's like you know, and you figure the guy get you know Brody Lee's 40 now. The guy gave up you know the bulk of his 30s. Wait, he's 40. You know, went, He's forty years old. No, uh, yes, yeah, he's forty he years old. He's forty years old. So you know, the guy gave yeah. up the bulk of his thirties. When you're not getting any younger every day, you're getting uh, and 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 that's that's frustrating. I get it, you know. So and he made some pretty darn good money too. He didn't yeah. do this for free. Very true. We didn't wrestle me, nor did I. Very true. I don't know, but we were denied those sweet Bludgeon Brother replica masks. I mean, imagine the payday that would have been. Every kid could have bought a rubber <laughs> mallet. Uh. But no, uh, I look. I think uh, it's too soon to tell how this is going to shake out in the long run. Uh, but we did have Brody Lee versus QT Marshall, quick squash, uh, with Lee getting the win via pinfall. I like this Brody's week. ring gear this year, this week better than last week. Yeah, yeah, I did too this week, and also great commentary about him being um, being compared to a young Kevin Nash. Um, that was good, but I would argue Brody is, is you know much more hybrid right as far as you know doing the lady guerrero roll into the ring like that you know in the senton flip that he does on top of the guy and mm. he's he's also six foot five you know what i mean and not an inch taller whereas kevin Nash seven feet tall there's a big difference but we get the gist the point was he was putting him over that was important that stuff needs to be said again nothing gets a star over more than having other stars talk about that star i feel yeah no, absolutely gives you legitimacy that's why i think jake roberts will work for, for for lance ultimately uh after that we had vanguard one traveling to california to check in on nick jackson who's out of action uh, we saw him training in his garage it says he's 61 percent healed <laughs> i thought that was awesome great use yeah. great use <laughs> of this right that, no, totally. That reminds me, Matt. You were around at the time. It reminds me of the old uh, when when Randy, Randy Orton. Orton. <laughs> the shoulder is seventy three percent complete. <laughs> totally, totally, and it gives you an update. It gives a guy the reason to be on the show, stay fresh in people's minds. Awesome, great use of Vanguard One. Then we had Kenny Omega defending the A, uh, the AAA Mega Championship <clears throat> against Sammy Guevara. That was, cool. that was yeah. cool that he was defending that. I thought that was pretty sweet. Yeah. What'd you guys think? Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what. I, I was impressed. Uh, you know, I, I've I've not been the biggest. You know, Kenny has not impressed me the same way. That other, you know, consistently that he does. Like where people else. say this. This yeah. match was. I mean, I, I this was good, and I appreciated. You know, the chops they were laying in, some brutal chops. Um, you know, some good high spots. I mean, yeah, this. I mean, this this was good. And yeah, just to bring in other titles. It definitely gives AEW a, a true international feel when you're willing to acknowledge and, and acknowledge the value and weight of other title belts. Damien Cole with the super chat saying Brody being Vince was my favorite part of tonight. And I am air saying 25 plus years of hype from Razor. Chico is a star. What? <laughs> I, the joke, because Razor Ramon would always say Chico, oh, Chico, Chico. 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 Oh, Chico. Chico. Reaching there, pal. Reaching. Chico. We're reaching. And I apologize. I'm coughing tonight. I, I believe it's allergies. I haven't left my house in two weeks. 
I'm actually, because you have to, uh, I think it's nationwide. You have to like go and show your ID to get allergy meds. I'm trying to like, uh, ration out my allergy meds and not just take them every day anymore because who knows how long all this is going to last. So all I know is your screen needs to distance itself further from me. I don't need you sneezing on my box here. Huh. Glenn, I didn't hear you cough. Not well, because I hit mute before I did, but people are seeing uh, it on the video. So, uh, but believe guys, me, are you got hey, are you guys in total lockdown there? Oh, yeah, yeah, all everything except essential businesses. Okay, yeah. So, so, so they, 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 the counties next to us did the same thing, but like, dude, the list of things that are on, like, of who they allowed to go do whatever. Mm -hmm is like a mile long and it's like what's the point of this if you're not if everybody gets to just do what they like you're not really doing anything you're just really grandstanding like not where you are i'm just saying yeah, some yeah, of these yeah. other yeah. neighboring it, it, counties and i'm like you're just grandstanding because you just wrote a, this epilogue of you know this endless amount of people that get to go they could go do what yeah. they want so you're really just doing it for show in a way yeah it's it's a, it's the same thing here they're telling that you know, no non-essential businesses their physical locations need to be closed but like i mean even the beer distributors are still allowed to be open <laughs> i mean it's kind of like you know yeah gamestop got a lot of shit cuz gamestop tried to declare themselves essential and then after people having outrage Ooh. on twitter gamestop finally decided to close their uh, doors for a couple weeks and pay their employees during this time. So it's, it's interesting. And tonight interesting. Uh, we really saw the impact tonight on the commercials that were aired uh, finally. And I have to give props to little Caesars. I love how they talked about, we cook our pizza at 500 degrees. Nobody touches it after it comes out of the oven. You can have a contactless pickup, contactless delivery. I like the businesses are uh, doing everything they can wow. to make people feel more comfortable now that we're giving them pay attention to commercials. I, I wish I paid attention to the commercials. Now. I didn't notice that. Yeah. And restaurants are pushing delivery a lot. So, uh, I think, you know, oh, we talked are, about it. it's important to support your local. Yeah. Your local mom and pop owned businesses. Yes, it is guys. Absolutely. Literally just four days in on this. We have a couple of businesses here that you wouldn't believe it. Like in my head, I would assume, you know, five days worth, four days worth of no business at all. You know, wouldn't be enough to put somebody out of business. It's not yeah. true. It, it, it's just not true. It's just scary, man. Yeah, restaurants are not the high margin business everyone thinks they are. Uh, in fact, right. well, so many of them fail. But also remember, um, local Little Caesars, Domino's, these franchisees are owned by people from your community more often than not. Generally, yes, they right. generally are. You, you, just really quick, just quick, quick, wherever yeah. you guys live, whatever city you guys all live in watching this, you don't if you don't have money because you're not got a paycheck and whatnot, can't expect people to financially support, you know, small mom and pop businesses if you don't have the money to do so. But you can go on social media, you can run up their Google scores for them and rate them. Yeah. On Facebook and Google and Yelp and places like that and really put them over huge. Or just share their stuff on social media. They're advertising something, a could pick up and whatnot, advertise it on your social media with their phone number. I know it's a lot of work, but it really will pay dividends and it all comes back to all of us anyway, when you think about it. Absolutely. And the other thing, just while we're talking about this, because a lot of people don't realize it, tip your grocery delivery, your food delivery people, um, you know, these Instacart shoppers, ship shoppers, people delivering are making very little money and uh, we're just leaving cash envelopes at the door. And they're taking hell of a risk. Hell yeah, of a risk. absolutely. They're out about there and uh, I've, I'm in. I have to say that when we go back to normal, I don't know if you've experienced this, having groceries de delivered and having this process, like I never realized how easy and interactive it was. Uh, it's just a shame yeah. that everybody's discovering this at once. So it's overloading the system. It is my wife's been doing this for years, man. It, yeah. I, it frustrates me at times because some of them <laughs> have, have like a minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, and if they didn't have like my yogurt in one of them, let's say my certain yogurt I use or protein, <laughs> let's say, she will go find where it's at and say that thing is just like five bucks with a twenty dollar delivery charge. She instead of just driving two miles down the road, she will put fifteen more bucks worth of stuff to bring up the charges to get it delivered. She's been yeah, dude, she's a pro at this, but I give her her time. But no, hey man, and right now is a good time to stock up. Raj was talking about this before we started uh, the show Monday. Man, I today tried to buy a se separate freezer to put in the garage. Oh yeah, I got that. Got that. Yeah. Finally got one ordered today. Then it'll be here in two weeks. But uh, game changer, dude! You can keep ordering now. Yep. 
Yeah, seriously. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Matt, we're going to have to wait till Monday to find out uh, if Moneybags Raj Geary took that $4 and watched the Goonies based <laughs> on uh, the Super Chat donation. Moneybags Raj Geary. <laughs> the best is Raj doesn't sell it at all. <laughs> He didn't even sell it at all. He's not even giving us reactions anymore, guys. We got to step up the mockery bigger, I think. Yes. Uh, back to tonight's show. Speaking of super chats, Damian Cole, five dollars. That's that's Goonies money right there. Sammy Guevara has so much potential. He's like a Shawn Michaels and Eddie Guerrero mix in their young days. Went twenty five plus oh. minutes with Omega. Thoughts on the match? Insanity. Insanity to go for twenty five minutes at that pace with what they were doing in that match. Like, are you kidding me? Dude, that kid is, I don't even know how old he is. I mean, I should be calling him a kid, but he is freaking good. We didn't need to see tonight's match to know Sandy Guevara is good. We've already known he's good for quite a long time um, since AEW started, I would argue. Since the since he started the inner circle, that was it for me. Um, other than his annoying tongue out of, hey, you remember the first promo with Jericho? He kept sticking his tongue out in a weird way. Um, other than that, from that moment on, I was like, you know, this dude is money. He's a star. He's there's his better days are still ahead of him because mark my words he will be a wwe product before it's all said and done uh one last question on what we were just talking about zook enigma had a super chat saying matt he wants to know if you've been in touch with governor desantis and was florida just approved for disaster declaration money who asked that question zook enigma Today. with 499 super chat can i read it or no sure he, he added a little quip at the end there, which I think is a little oh, unfair. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, yeah. I said, I guess being buddy buddy with Trump works. Trump does own Mar Mar Lago's in Florida. I think Trump has a vested interest probably in Florida Matt, as much as New York. As long as the governor DeSantis, we were just approved for disaster declaration money. I have not spoken to him about that. No. Today I spoke to our county commissioner, and tomorrow we have a conference call and then a press conference about whether this county they're going to declare it. Because we don't decide as city commissioners, or sorry, city mayors, if a county is to be on lockdown or not. That's yeah. decided by county, county commission. Um, so that's the next step up from city, obviously. So um, we're going to be on a conference call with them tomorrow and see what they're doing. But as far as that question, no, I, I don't know anything about that yet. Jay Lane, two bucks to say, Justin, how are you a Caps fan in Pittsburgh? Because I lived my whole life, I, I live, I grew up in the Maryland D.C. area. I moved to Pittsburgh in 2005, so I've always been a Caps fan, still a Caps fan. My cousin is on the Little Caps youth team. He's one of the best prospects in the country. Like the Capitals are just What's his a, name? A part of my Gavin Globitz. Put him over. Why so, did you say your cousin? Yeah, he's, he's name. yeah, yeah. But uh, so yeah, no, the Caps are a big, big part of my family. It's just loyalty. I can't. Just because I moved hey. to a different city doesn't mean I can just drop it. No, are you kidding me? I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan living here in Florida. I'm a Yankee yeah. fan living here in Florida. Yeah. Um, I'm a LeBron James fan. Whatever team he plays for, that's my number one <laughs> team living here in Florida. Yeah. Um, really quick, who on the Caps was good when we were younger? We're, Anybody? I mean, I watched hockey when I was a little kid. I'm trying to remember that from the Caps. So, I mean, depending like through the, through, the through the 90s, you had Dale Hunter, Peter Bondra, um, you know, Kevin Hatcher. Uh, Nobody like a Gretzky, though, right? Well, in the later 90s, Yager, Yarman Yager, left the Penguins oh, and went oh, to the Capitals. Oh, oh, no. Patrick Waugh. Oh, he's Canadian. Never mind. No, the, the goalie the Caps had was Olaf Kolzik. Uh, he was the, okay. the goalie. Took him. Mayor Gene Pasteur did for Tampa. They are fighting. Dude, don't, don't, don't put these questions on okay. me, This, this I, dude's that's trolling. What, he's always, okay. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's no idea I understand. what he's talking about. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to issue this right now. This is a new rule for the Wrestling Inc. podcast. I don't care how much Super Chat money you throw at us. We are not going to talk anything that's political or that... Uh, We're here to talk about wrestling. Their minds off all these things well, like that. That's not silly. just wrestling. Contact, contact, contact. Well, yeah, you could talk to them then, Glenn. If oh, they no, want no, to no. contact me, they can contact me on Twitter and Instagram and like everybody else. You don't have to waste money doing that. That's ridiculous. Yes. But in fact, this is the rule. This is how we say it, Matt. No one, don't talk to us about our day jobs on here. I don't want to talk about the advertising industry. Justin doesn't want to talk about uh, uh, high school sports. Matt doesn't want to talk about government. We're here to take a break, as it were, to get away from it all. Um, that being said, uh, Kenny versus Sammy. Great match. Kenny Omega winning and retaining tonight. 
And after that, we went right into this final prom promo segment with Jericho coming out to the ring, the cameraman singing uh, Judas, uh, <laughs> uh, which was fun, right? Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, Vanguard One flying over, and Chris J uh, and Chris Jericho asking Vanguard One to join the inner circle. Um, Matt Hardy coming out. Okay, so this was polarizing tonight, Matt. What did you think? of this face-off, the little camera effect, the thing we all did with the camcorder when we first got one 30 years ago of pausing it in the recording. Oh, now I'm over here. Now I'm over here. Now I'm over here. And then going Hilarious. to the ring and cutting that promo. That was great. You didn't like it? I thought it was good. I mean, I, I like that it was tongue-in-cheek, that even the camera angle moved so you could tell they didn't even try and make it seamless. I think that had a certain charm to it. Oh, a charm, as it were. As it were. Yeah. It, uh, it was, I was Matt, I was tickled. <laughs> to, to, to me i took it as them taking advantage of being able to you know they, they have an empty venue so they can do this if they had a, a, a venue full of people you can't pull this 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 cheap editing trick off i thought it, i thought it looked cool i thought it was fun nice little touch you know yeah again remember this is an improv this is an this is an improvised episode this was not the episode they were planning to put on so they had to improvise and write all this the, the show in the last week different from what they planned on so i thought doing something a little like this and same thing they're able to do vanguard one because they're in that venue that's an outdoor venue that the cons own if they were in inside an arena fcc wouldn't let them use that use that drone so i mean this this, this is i don't know they're, they're making the most of the situation i think um matt hardy saying he is uh damascus matt hardy is the vessel but damascus is uh over three thousand years old <laughs> Jericho understands reinvention. Ah, uh, I mean, this Matt's getting to be Matt, right? This isn't, he's not being held back. This is the most unfiltered Matt Hardy we've had uh, since yes. he uh, got off the Indies and went back to WWE. Yep, since TNA. Yep. It was fun. It was fun. And, 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 and you know, I, and little things. They uh, they didn't use handheld mics. They used they had wired they they had lav mics clipped to them. So you know this felt more like a scene out of a movie. You weren't watching them hold a stick mic like this. They they, they had they were mic'd yeah, on their good. shirts and um so so the, okay, that gave a different feel to the dialogue. They shot the camera angles differently for this. Um, Hardy laid in a hell of a punch uh, that, that, that that Jericho sold and, and then acknowledged verbally that he sold. Like wow, you can take the champion down. Oh, that was good. Again, I, this is such an improv because. They're, you know, then then Cody and 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 Kenny and them come to help Hardy. Like they're still building towards a blood and guts war games kind of match, but they don't even know when it's going to be yet. So this is tough because you're 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 trying to keep the story going, but when you don't know I'm, when that endpoint's going to be, I'm confused though. Why can't they just do blood and guts on TV? I don't understand. Tony Khan state. Well, I mean, we think we read it last week when we were on this podcast. They they decided to put it off for now, given given the climate of the thing of things going on they, they figure that's not the best match to be doing at the moment you know, oh. that many people in the ring blood guts they just felt that oh. it's just not appropriate uh, it's five on, okay yeah you could go yeah that makes sense so 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 you're trying to build this so you're, you know you just brought matt hardy and the hot you know, this hot free agent you know you gotta you gotta keep the momentum of the story going but it's so tough when you don't know when the end point is yeah. how long do you have to stall for essentially matt matt hart is a big enough star that they can i don't know why they continue to have him do stuff with cody and them um i would have him just branch out on his own he's a star he's a main event star and go in a different direction i, I think they've got to do that quick because what you just said look what you just said you know um that they all you know came in came in and tried to help him after and it still it makes you feel that there's still somewhat still going in some more of that direction of them all still being a team together in a way, right? Yeah. So they got to continue to book themselves into a corner if they don't veer left right. now while they can. Right. This was awesome um, that Sammy came from behind to attack Matt Hardy. Then right. we had Omega and Cody come make the save. Sammy and Jericho on the ramp, and then Matt Hardy controlling the pyro fire to sort of scare them to the back as we went off the air. Yeah, that was good. That was cool. Very, very Kane Undertaker esque. So I asked Justin Labar this before we started this podcast, and he said, Glenn, is this the hill you want to die on? Um, but 
Much like if Tyler Breeze is an internationally famous supermodel and Matt Hardy is a 3,000-year-old vessel, why professional wrestling? Like, well, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, because it's wrestling and we said so, just like everything else in wrestling is. Yeah. If you're the million dollar you know, man, if you're the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, why? Probably? Why would you want to? Yeah, that's an even better question. It's true. Well, because he's bored. It's like an indecent proposal. Why if did Robert Redford do that? If he needed the, he needed the entertainment. You know, if you're if if you're Hunter Hearst Helmsley from Greenwich, Connecticut, a royal blue blood, why the hell do you want to be wrestling Henry Godwin with slop? It. The, the, this is not the opinion hill to die on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, <laughs> thank you. Move on. Yes, uh, I'm gonna thank somebody Ron super Ar chat and say thank you, Justin. No, I'm gonna <laughs> thank Ron Armenta for his 9.99 super chat for his little joke Jeez. that I'm not gonna put up. I'm not gonna put this on the air though because he's testing me after uh, what I said uh, about our new rule. It's fine. It's okay. cute. But just I'm setting. I'm I'm laying down the law here tonight. But uh, let's uh, give our final thoughts on tonight's dynamite. And then we've got another super chat with a very good question. Uh, Matt, your yeah. final thoughts on dynamite tonight. Awesome. Loved it. Very entertained tonight. Justin. Same. Yeah. Same. Uh, I was, I was very entertained. I, I, so, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't turn, I, I, again, AEW had my priority. I, right. I was, I was checking same NXT, here. but I have my AEW uh, priority. It just, Me it, too. just, there's more hooks right now. And, and again, part of that, unfortunately, you know, NXT can't control it. Again, NXT yes. doesn't have their thing to build to, so they're kind of like out there, kind of floating around. Just well, then to be fair, what does AEW have to build to? Well, that, that, that's the thing. AEW doesn't have their date to build to, as I just said, but they're still investing and going full speed with you know with Brody Lee. There's the exalted one with with Matt there. I mean, like they're like they're going full yeah. speed ahead, not not knowing when the final destination is going to be. NXT until the final segment of NXT, which we'll get to, they're just kind of bobbing out right. there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not having, about? not having takeover, I think really hurts. Uh, right. I don't was... understand that. I could have sworn they were still having takeover, but at a different location. Well, they can't because takeover was supposed to be Saturday night, and now Saturday night's going to be night one of WrestleMania. So why do I still think they were doing takeover? Maybe Friday then or something. I Are think people sure? assumed they would do it on a Wednesday, but now they're just going to spread out the matches starting next Wednesday over uh, subsequent episodes of NXT. Yeah. Uh, Omar Camacho with the super chat says, what are your thoughts on part two of the Chris Benoit documentary? See, I watched just everyone at home is watching this right now. Understands. I saw the entire thing in one lump sum, whatever you want to call it. The entire, uh, documentary, the entire thing, him, Eddie, everything. Um, so I don't know what part of it of Benoit you're talking about, but the entire thing on Benoit was, I thought it was an incredibly well done job. And again, to me, so much of it was those silhouettes uh, of, of like, was it Tyson Ducks or Tyson Dew playing um, uh, him at times, right? In the background, playing the shadow version of Chris Benoit or whatnot. Um, regardless, it added to the story, being able to see the physical interactions and whatnot. Uh, even though it wasn't really him, it told the story better. It just really did. This was a really j great job done. I was really happy that so many people participated too, like like Jericho, Vicky. Um, it was awesome to see Chris's son get some closure for crying out freaking loud. Yeah. You know, a poor kid. That was awesome to be able to watch. Um, with with his aunts, there's so much to this. I really I thought it was it was all really well done. But I'm not gonna lie, I definitely cried a couple times watching it. No 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 exaggeration. That, that yeah. was really well done. It's heavy stuff, and Matt, I agree. One, it's a production thing they do. One, one of the things that can often hurt when uh, when any kind of documentary series is trying to tell the story is just bad reenactments where they find try to find actors who Yo, resemble. Yeah. So by them doing these silhouettes where you just see a glimpse of ring gear that yes. is the actual ring gear and a body type that is the body type, but you don't actually see their faces, and it's all right. it is it's all silhouettes. It makes the reenactment. Um, it, 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 it voids it from um, from cheesiness. Let's put it that way. Yes, uh, Matt. The reason Matt. The reason why he's asking about the reason why he's saying part two is because it was two hours. So you watch the full two hours. But what they did, given the streaming binge need that we all have, is they released the first hour on YouTube a couple days early to let people mm. watch that, and so they yeah. referred to that as part one, and then the second okay. hour is part two. So you watch the whole thing on Vice. You watch the whole thing, but but technically hour two is considered part two because they tried to 
release on digital first. I know that. I was just telling them I don't know what part of the episode that that would be though, because I saw it in one of them. So. Okay, P- part two is hour two. That's so, whatever. But part part two starts when uh, when uh, when they when they start with Chris in the murder at the house. Everything prior to that was part one. Uh, Michael the virus saying tough watch, good show, heavy subject. Um, yeah, this I mean a lot with this. Why I haven't watched it yet, to be honest. Uh, seeing people tweet about it. I mean, I was seeing tweets from people saying I started watching this, but just right now, this is not the the mindset, you know, that that I want to be in. And I, I understand that. You know, there's some great art out there and great uh documentaries that are just very, very difficult. But I I, I will definitely get around to watching it. Um to hear you guys talk about it. it sounds very well done. It's either this or Tiger King, pick one. So what's up with Tiger King? Explain this to I'm me. A, I've only watched. I actually, no, actually, no, I don't even want because I don't want spoilers to start popping up. I'm because I'm knowing a few. I just started episode one last night. I couldn't do it tonight because I'm doing this obviously with the wife. What I, the hell is Tiger King? I don't even. Don't put up any. <laughs> don't put up any spoilers. Any no anything. no. What is it though? It's on Netflix and it's about a guy who uh, he collects big cat tigers, but he. And he has an ad. He has a, a nemesis who's in the act, the, the 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 animals activist world, and it seems like there's a murder for hire case, and there's drugs involved, and it's I don't even know if that does it justice. I'm only an episode in, and I'm trying to, but it, it's is like is it a real story or yes. is it acting? Yeah, no, it's a real story. It's it's think 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 like making a think of like making a murder, but like uh, very geriatric okay. with, with with these characters. Okay. It's like uh, the, it's like the number it's like the number one or two trending thing on Netflix right now in the, in the United huge, States. Huge, yeah. huge right now. Uh, Justin Lopez has a super chat. Matt, what was your relationship like with Chris Benoit? Very good, actually. Very good. He's very humble, honestly. Incredibly humble. Respect. Really was big on respect. Um, good lord, was he intense as hell in the ring. But then backstage, it's what you, everybody says ad nauseum about him. It's it's really the truth. Um, about how he is backstage. He's so dust up, so like quiet. I mean, really quiet. Hmm. You know, but he'd pull you aside and give you some advice and things like that. And then in the ring, once the bell rang, he was intense as hell. Very intense. And he wanted you to bring it. He wanted you to hit him and stiff him. And it was actually him who I worked with that I finally broke my bad habit of not laying things in. And as a big guy, you really got to lay things in because it sticks out more like a sore thumb when you don't. Mm. And I was always so scared to do it because you're taught not to hurt nobody. If you hurt somebody, especially a big star like that, you're never going to work with a man event talent again because they'll be too scared to work with you. So you'd have guys like Big Show complaining that, oh, that hurt me on the F5 to Vince, which was bullshit. No, I didn't. Um, And then you have someone like Chris Benoit who would be like, dude, lay it in, Matt. Your shit is weak. You've got to lay it in. You're hitting me in safe areas. The broad, the broad, the broad, the broad part of his back, uh, like when you kick the guy in the stomach and he bends down and you're forming him over the back like that, you got to lay that shot in. It's got to make a big noise when you do it. Um, little things like that he taught me. And, um, again, he's the first big star I worked with that let me do that. Um, and built my confidence in it, but uh, every wrestler can say this same story. I'm sure they already all have. This completely caught everybody off guard. Yeah, well, Jer- uh, Jer- Jer- Jericho, honestly, Chris says it the best, actually. And that is, if you were to make up a lineup of wrestlers that we were wrestling with at the time, and said who you thought this was capable of doing, what Chris Benoit went out and did, Chris would be probably second to maybe dead last. Of who you would predict would do this? Seriously, yeah. it's crazy. It's so wild. You don't get it. Nobody understands it. Wow. Uh, talking about NXT tonight, they were at full sale. Um, this may have been taped. I don't know. Um, we had Beth Phoenix or Beth Phoenix, Nigel McGuinness, and more. Now we're not there. We had Tom Phillips and Byron Saxton calling the show and opened with Austin theory versus Tyler breeze. Um, quite a lengthy match. I mean, I guess my first question is Matt, were you surprised that Tyler breeze went over in this? No, Tyler breeze is a star. Damn it. <laughs> he is. Um, he's good and he's entertaining and he's funny. And he's, I think he's a good promo. Um, and he worked his tail off to get where he finally got to. And they, the WWE blundered him. 
Um, but I like what they do with him in NXT, and I, I told you I'm still not seeing it in Austin in, in Austin Theory yet. He's a he's a good worker, you know. I'm just I I, I had a lot of hype from my 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 opinion of what I heard from my fans on Twitter over the last couple of years. So I was expecting honestly like the next CM Punk. I swear to God, that's what I was expecting. Wow. I didn't have that kind of hyper expectation, but yeah, I mean, I had heard about him. He's got a good look. He's got a good physique. Um, you know, like he's got a good body, but yeah, he hasn't. Let me clarify yet. that. Okay, hang on. Let me clarify. That. Okay, not not CM Punk. Okay, let me, I don't want to discredit my fans. I got to be honest. Okay, they didn't say CM Punkish, but I would say soup like a big star. This kid's gonna be a huge star. And when he signed with WWE, oh, you're gonna love him, Matt. That's what I get hearing. There you go. Sorry. Continue. Um, yeah, I, I actually was surprised by this. I mean, and, and, and Tyler Breeze is great, but I was like, I figured, okay, this is Tyler Breeze being out there to be, you know, here's Tyler Breeze, uh, uh, a credible veteran who's been around. Gives the kid credibility for being a credible. Yeah, yeah, so I was shocked. I, I, I did not expect this, and I may mean, actually makes me scratch my head to wonder, like, either a, do they have some kind of plan for Tyler Breeze, which great if they do, or b, sure. yeah. has this has this Austin Theory guy fallen short of initial expectation, and uh, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. Um, yeah, I love Tyler Breeze, but he's someone that a loss would not diminish him one bit at this point. Um, Plus, he should be on fashion runways. Why is he? Yes, exactly. Why would an international male supermodel want to wrestle? Um, Glenn. <laughs> I, just sometimes these thoughts Matt go through Morgan, my mind. Matt, Matt Morgan's a mayor of a of a of a town in Florida. Why would he want to be on a podcast with two schmucks uh, at, at eleven o'clock at night on a Wednesday night? Uh, funny you should ask. I asked myself this question. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie, Matt. You know you have your ring gear on uh, from the waist down. <laughs> waiting for that. Waiting for that AEW call. You thank you, Justin. <laughs> um. Oh, I forgot this match happened tonight. Killian Dane versus what? Tahuti Miles. Who is Tahuti Miles? I have no idea. Someone in the chat knows. Uh, I mean, Killian got the win. Um, this is not. Jeez, oh, I don't want to say this. I don't want to be like a dick, but I'm like, this is not the 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 Killian Dane train is not going to have NXT overtake AEW. Like, I just don't. I don't yeah. see that this gained viewers this segment it was very forgettable but he is a big impressive looking man right a big monster you do need to have that on your roster you do you know you do need to have the the, the variety and, and talent right it's yeah. a three ring circus that's your you know your strong man so to speak if you're the lady you've got you've got your high wire act uh, what do you call them whatever those people are called Trapeze uh, artist. Clown. Then you have your clowns, right? You gotta have variety. He gives them a little bit of variety. Okay, okay. I mean, but I think following this up and Killian Dane won that match, but following that up with Cameron Grimes versus Tony Nese, and Cameron Grimes has gotten a bit of a build. Tony Nese, former uh, cruiserweight champion. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Was, I thought that was a good match, though. The next match, I did. Think yeah, Tony Grimes, Tony Nese was good. Was good. I just think about this counter programming to what was going on with AEW, and I just don't think this is getting people to tune back in. Unlike the no, next match, right. Io Shirai versus Aaliyah, um, even with uh, this originally supposed to be with uh, what was it with uh, Zia Lee tonight and the backstage attack, and then have it be Io Shirai and Io Shirai get a fairly easy win. Like, I like that they're hyping up this the six woman ladder match. Like this is something. Actually, it's kind of funny, Matt. I mean, we talk about NXT's female di uh, division being its biggest strength. AEW had no women's matches tonight, and NXT waited until you know, a good half an hour plus in to uh, get to the women hyping this match, which is going to be a banger. I mean, right? We're going to have uh, Chelsea Green, Mia Yim, Tegan Knox. Um, yeah, this is going to be a fantastic match. What's going to be? The six woman ladder match uh, for the number one contendership for the uh, NXT oh, Women's Championship. Yes, yes, yes. I, yeah. I lost it there for a minute. Uh, we got a teaser vignette for Dexter Loomis, the former Samuel Who Shaw. That Sam Shaw? I believe so, yes. Oh, good for him. I'm happy for him. 
He always had a great look. Uh, Keith Lee was asked about Damian Priest recently attacking him during his title offense against Cameron Grimes. He thought it was Dominic Dijakovic. He owes Dijakovic an uh, apology. Dijakovic came out, said he doesn't give a damn about the apology, only the title. And uh, then out came Priest, who taunted them both. Um, yeah, so this is building it up. I mean, with, I think uh, this could be this could be good. Dijakovic with that springboard to the outside. You don't see a man. He, no, you do not. That is so hard. Mark, the last time I saw somebody with that height pull that off, Mark Jindrak, who was a lot more muscular, I'm just going to point out. Um, much bigger frame, um, it, which I was always so impressed with. I was athletic as hell. I could do a shooting star press. Like, no joke, I could. I could never do that, though, because our legs are too long. The fact that Dominic could pull that off is so impressive, you guys. It's like, that's cool to hear you call that out, Justin. Not many people get why it's so impressive because how long the legs are, how big his feet are. It's really hard to do. It's and become the norm. Fan, fans expect everybody to be able to do it. <laughs> and what's crazy yeah. is to get you to, to, to not trip with your big water ski feet that he's got like I got <laughs> on that top rope is next to impossible, and he pulls it off every time. I would kill to work with him on his promos, though. I would. Because he's got it. He just got to, he's got to tighten up his promos, though. He had a really big opportunity tonight in that promo to deliver it differently, in my opinion. Um, here's a guy coming out with his hat, you know, hat in hand, so to speak, right? Say, hey, man, my bad, my mistake. Um, he could have really done something more with this promo, in my opinion, instead of just saying, hey, that doesn't matter to me. I care about your title. He could have crescendoed that a little bit better, a little cleaner. And he's still, he's still getting better. He's still getting better with his promos. And he's still working on it. But once he gets that, man, shit. Because his wrestling is on a whole different level, man. He's good. Yeah. No, I think that's going to be uh, good when these guys face off, I'm assuming, uh, in a, three, a triple threat match. Um, Djokovic was standing tall over Liam Priest as good. the segment finished. Which Let's is talk. good. That, 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 that was good business, by the way. Go ahead. What? Uh, Adam Cole, poolside. We didn't see the pool. Thought we were going to pan out and see it was like a kid's swimming pool or something. But uh, <laughs> saying he was on vacation, coming to you poolside, talking about Velveteen Dream and saying uh, Dream versus Bobby Fish next week. Uh, so I'm assuming Dream will beat Bobby Fish and then challenge Cole for the yeah. title. Yeah, this was very good use. And this is exactly what we were talking about. Um, I said for WrestleMania, I would have had every single match be at a different location. Like, not just, like, an arena in a ring full of nobody. I mean, like, in the parking lot for one match, at a graveyard for another match, uh, gym at another match, a basketball court at another match. Like, literally, just change the aesthetic of every match just so every match does offer something different and we're not so stuck on no fans being there so much, right? Um, so I like their use of this, of uh, taking a shitty situation and – in my opinion, making a main event star look like a bigger main event star. He's too cool for school to be there right now. He's out yeah. there right now getting sun. I thought that was great. I thought that was very good heat. Yeah. Yeah, he is too cool for school. You know, he's uh you, you could see in the reflection of his glasses, he's obviously filming it holding his uh he'll holding his phone. I think that's one of the things that coming out of the other side of this um pandemic, you know, we're watching, you know, Jimmy Fallon show being hosted by Fallon at his house and what have you. I think we are it's gonna kids, come to yeah. we are gonna come to accept it like it's okay for even in WWE and AEW for for promos to be filmed by guys selfie style, and that and then an iPhone and cell phone is acceptable. A Skype interview is acceptable. Um, yeah, I like to people gonna have to people are gonna have to learn how to make that work for them too, because camera angles are important. Yeah, um, and so is sound quality. So is the backdrop. So is the aesthetics around. But if, if you are good at what you do and with how you how you how you communicate verbally. And through your facials and whatnot, you can make it work. So there might be people that may normally be crappy at a backstage promo with, with, with uh, let's say, interviewer with microphone stick in hand and holding it right. up to the wrestler's face to talk. My guest Whereas, at this time is so-and-so. Yeah, yeah. Well, they may suck, you know, what donkey balls at that. But they may be, <laughs> but they may be great. Let me finish. They're going to not hear me talk because you're laughing at me. Um, but listen, no, listen. Um, but, but, it, but they may be really money at being able to hold their damn camera phone in front of them instead. Everybody has practice at that. So, I'm, you know, maybe this is something that we can get a positive out of with this, you know? 
And, and Matt, to your point about Mania being in like all these different locations, you know, at, at the Performance Center, they do have a a, a, a virtual studio, a 360 virtual studio, which for those for people that don't know what that means, that basically means it's a studio where you could put a ring, or you can put an actual desk or an object there, but it is 360 green screened, so they can literally, you know, make. Where was that? I've been to the Performance Center. I didn't see this. It's in their promo room now, but they have the ability uh, upstairs. Oh. They, they have the ability to where they could put a ring and they could do a match in front of a green screen. So you could literally have whatever back. You, you could have Facebook Live comments showing on the green screen as the match is going on. Not that you'd want that necessarily, but like they have the ability to do it. It's how they do. Um, actually, no, they're, they're three. I'm sorry. You know what? You're wrong. I'm, I'm wrong, Matt. Um, they have the green screen in the promo room in the Performance Center. The 360 studio, I think, is actually in their uh, cool, studio cool. in Stanford. That's where they do the yeah. like the Saudi Arabia pre shows out of when they do the when they do the pre shows back in Stanford. It's all yeah. a virtual screen, the desk, everything. It's all it's all yeah. computer generated. It's all it's all like a, it's like the Matrix. It's like you pick the set or the template that you want out of the computer and apply it to the green screen, and then your your bodies, your living bodies, are standing there on the X's. So I mean, they can do a lot of things. I mean, they could uh, you know they could they could uh, they, there's a lot of potentials they what they could do for WrestleMania for the looks of it. I think Velveteen Dream versus Adam Cole should happen in Adam Cole's backyard, and they should do a backyard wrestling match on NXT. Why that though? What made you think of that? Because backyard, Matt, we're old enough to remember when backyard wrestling was such a thing. I think now it would be kind of oh, like, oh, I got you, yeah. Because that was always what you'd see, like the kids jumping, like I'm going to power bomb into a swimming pool, like I'm going to jump off right. the roof. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Go crazy with. It. You know, I'm worried, Justin, based on what you're saying, though, that it's going to be like, I'm going to fight you in virtual reality. And it's, it's going to be like the Matrix and it'll be corny as hell. Although that could probably be kind of fun in a stupid way, too. Um, who knows? So pe people are uh, tweeting at me saying tonight was taped. Justin, did you hear about that? Was tonight pre-taped? NXT? Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they filmed it a few hours earlier. I mean, this has been a heavy workload day. They're filming WrestleMania matches as today as well. So wow, they are. Yeah, they we'll are. get we'll get to that when we're done next year. And no spoilers. We're making a pact. Even if we get That's spoilers, cool. no spoilers. No. Uh, Oni Lorkin and Danny Birch versus Shane Thorne and Brendan Vink. Brendan Vink what? having quite a quite a week. He was on Raw, wasn't he? Yes. Prompting us to say, who the F is Brendan Vink? You're very impressed by him, though, Glenn, the way you're, and you're saying his name. <laughs> because it's just... you're, you're literally crescendoing his name. <sighs> it's, it's just a unique name to the point where, I mean, I feel like we Glenn, know who people are most of the time. Do you know who, wait, do you know who Glenn Rubenstein is? <laughs> <laughs> Questions like that asked by Ryback every week when he gets these tweets. He's like, I know Raj, and I know Matt Morgan, <laughs> but who the F is Glenn Rubenstein? <laughs> my partner in crime yes uh omar camacho saying mania is too historic to be taped at the impact zone does right wait does ryback ask who is glenn rubenstein hey. before or after he takes a sip of a daiquiri with a shared straw with 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 raj Jesus. I think they go around each other's hand. Oh, okay, no, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? They go around each other's arms. Oh, that's Nate. Yeah. What was that? Uh, the the French style of uh, it wasn't. Yeah, that was an '80s trope. That was always an '80s. Definitely. I think they have a private handshake. <laughs> <laughs> I think they do. What do you think? What do you think their code names are for each other? <laughs> oh God. Uh, Thirsty hut no. Um, oh god! Like you know, oh, top, top Gun, total Top Gun. You know it's Top Gun. <laughs> All right, Goose. Goose. All right, Maverick. <laughs> Definitely, hundred percent. That is my call. Yes, yes. Oh, I was yes. gonna say, uh, uh, Raj calls Ryback big guy, and uh, Ryback calls Raj little guy. Like the question. <laughs> I, I here's why. I, honestly, really quick. Here's what I think it is. I think one time Raj sent a text to to Ryback. And, and and refer to him as Goose. And <laughs> Raj got a reply. All I said is, what? Uh, WTF. And that was it. The, the, Ryback would not play along with it, I don't believe. I wonder what... Uh, we need to get Raj... Next time Raj is on here, we need to get Raj to put his phone up to the screen, and I want to see what, what Ryback's name is in his context list. Because you know it's not just Ryback or Ryan. You know it's something... 
something crazy in, in the contacts list. Oh, no, it's definitely Ryback. He wants people to accidentally go into his phone and <laughs> see that he has Ryback's cell phone. Let's be honest. <laughs> and when he's out in public, it probably, he'll it probably yeah. says It probably says Ryback like five times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever Ryback calls him or texts him, it doesn't matter where Raj is. He always says out loud, "Oh, Ryback's trying to get a hold of me." Oh no, even better. Ra Ra <laughs> yes. Ra Ra Raj has a special ringtone for when Ra Raj has a special ringtone for when it's Ryback's notifications, and it probably is Ryback saying like, "Feed me more" or something. Oh, like absolutely, that. feed me more. I can see that. <laughs> Raj, if we're correct on Wait, any of these, please. Let I just got it. I just got a text. I really hope it's Raj. Hang on. Oh, it's not. Damn it. No, I was gonna say, Raj, if we're correct on any of these, please say please say absolutely nothing and never reference this ever, and then we'll know we were right. Yeah, don't ruin it for us. <laughs> it's gonna be such so interesting when Ryback is on this podcast, uh, which allegedly is gonna happen sooner rather than later. Yay. Uh Oni Lorkin and Danny Birch won that match. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, let's talk about Candice LeRae versus Caden Carter. This was a qualifying match for the fifth spot in the six-woman match, the ladder match, for the number one contendership on NXT not takeover. Um, Candice LeRae getting a win here. This was a pretty good match. Some good back and forth. Candice LeRae is awesome. I mean, that's no surprise, right? Yeah. Um, but this was. This was a really good match, actually. I thought this was... You know what's so tough now, though, Gwen? I don't know if it happens for you, but for me, my expectations for the women's NXT girls are so damn high. Yeah. That it's not really fair because they don't have the fans in the arena. And it does hurt matches that I'm normally really pumped to watch. Does that make sense? Like, uh, Yes, I'll give you this analogy. Matt, what was your favorite food? Growing up, and like as a teenager, that was a special occasion food that you absolutely loved. My mom would do homemade tacos. Okay, what about like going out to eat, for instance? Like was there oh, a beef, steak, beef steak Charlie's. Okay, so when you got old enough that you could just go get beef steak Charlie's whenever you wanted, uh, you were like, "This is still never. really good, but it's not a special." No, yeah. rarely went. When I was able, to, yeah, good call. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. I think they've spoiled us so much. Um, that it's tough to have it stand out. I just, I mean, the more time, the better that they give them. Tonight was really light on the women's roster, which is surprising given that yeah. it's still the hottest. I mean, I oh, think it's still the hottest thing in NXT. By far and away it is. Um, I would argue in a company to a degree, right? What 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 bad girls match have we seen? Yeah, none really. It's like, well, that, well, that was it. I mean, I, I take that back, except for sometimes on Ron SmackDown. Yeah. Um, but NXT, I'm yet to see one of them. Um, and then we had Matt Riddle versus Roderick Strong tonight. So this... Which I love, by the way. Yeah. we, we got to give a yeah, shout please. to Matt Riddle on his entrance. Doing the, the miming, the bro fist bumps when nobody's there. Like, you know how he always fist pumps all the people in the crowd, and he was giving out fake ones. That was... I don't know, it was just very Matt Riddle ish, perfect for his brand. That was a very good explanation of it, too. Matt Riddle ish, it is. It was. <laughs> uh, good match, good back and forth. Riddle getting the oh, win. Yeah. But afterwards, uh, the big news was when Riddle was standing tall in the music kits, and we got uh, Indian superstars, Sar Sarav Gurjur. Gajar and Rinku Singh uh, hitting the ring and destroying Riddle. Riddle fighting back, but they beat him down. And then Malcolm Bivens showed up, taunting Riddle, saying that uh, Pete Dunne is on the other side of the world. Now is the perfect time to introduce Riddle to the future of the NXT Tag Team Division. Um, they're, uh, yeah, and that was it. They didn't actually give their names, but Wrestling Inc. has uh, all the info. Um, what did you think of this? I mean, this was kind of a surprise <coughs> debut. Uh, what did you think of this, Matt? Very good use of a bad situation. His partner's not there. This was at a very good opportune time for a tag team to come show dominant dominance rather and take over. I thought that was very good. And those whoever those guys are look like a big deal because of it. They beat down Matt Riddle. That doesn't happen often. Um, I don't know who those guys are though. Yeah, they're um yeah, they're yeah, they're Indian. Uh one of them actually is a former major league baseball player. Oh wow. Um 
he, he there, there's that there's that movie million dollar arm he it, it, it it's about him yeah uh, that's about him. The one, one, one of them. The sing, the sing. I don't know how to pronounce his first name, but um, yeah, you know they looked the part. This was a big spot for them. Like you look like a big deal. I mean, just by little things, just by like, just by just the little things they tried to do of like feeding and setting up clotheslines. They 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 were rushing. They were moving fast. They looked nervous. They looked like guys that just started wrestling within the last two years, which that's the case. Um, you know, you could tell riddles. Yeah. <laughs> protecting himself a little bit more at some of the things they were doing. But uh, yeah, but, but all that aside, X's and O's aside for what the spot was, that's a big spot. Uh, them having a talking plea, talking piece in Malcolm. Um, yeah. Uh, it used to be Stokely. Uh, as uh, Tammy saying Stokely Hathaway as well. Uh, Tammy saying they're finally doing something. His signing to NXT was such a big deal. What was it? It was over a year ago. He's been doing live events. Yeah. Um, he's been hyped as this great talker. I thought tonight, it was great to finally see him. His Twitter feed is hilarious. He has one it of the is. best Twitter games in all. I don't know who he is. I'm gonna go follow him. I don't know. Who yeah, go follow him. Is. Yeah, he's he's a good he's a good talker. He's a good mind. He's a great dude. Is funny as all hell, and but he's got great facial expressions. If you watch at the end of the promo when they all do their hard sell to the camera after the promo's done, he has this, this wonky eyed kind of look. And I mean, he has, he has good facial expressions. Yeah, um, I thought that that debut. I, it probably would have worked better with a live audience, but uh, yeah, I think this is uh, building something up, some good competition for Riddle and Dunn. Um, after that, let's talk about this closing segment with Triple H talking about the feud between Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano and what it means to NXT, and he was immediately interrupted by Tommaso Ciampa making his way out. Ciampa said he's been there for five years, and uh, everything that's been said has been said. Everything that's been done has been done. They know Gargano is there. Uh, Gargano comes out, blames everything on Ciampa. Um, and yeah, basically uh, Triple H saying that because Gargano super kicked the referee, if it was up to William Regal, both would be fired. Um, so he's only here because Triple H saved his job. And, um, and I liked, and Triple H also, Glenn, I liked he, he yeah. commented on like, like, I know what you guys are going through. Sean yeah. and I went through the same thing. He, he, he compared Gargano and Ciampa's feud to, you know, feuds that, that Hunter and, and Shawn Michaels once had. You know, in the early two thousands, when Sean came back and they were at it, I thought that I mean that, that's huge credibility. I don't think I don't think ever Triple H has ever likened anybody else to he and Sean in a storyline context, which is pretty big. Yeah, and uh, Triple H saying though this has to end, it has to be over, and so in two weeks he's going to send them a location and they're going to go there and it will be uh, the, the brawl to end it all as it were between them, because if they keep it going beyond that, uh, they'll both be out of NXT. And then like we, have, yeah, it's kind of a cool way to say this is. is it. Yeah. Um, and this, I mean, Matt, I think doing this it, two weeks will be the week after Mania, right? This will be the yeah. uh, the eighth. Yes. Oh, Matt, this will be the show we were supposed to go to live. Uh, that of episode. It is. Yes. Um, but I could see this match easily being. This could be a two-hour match. This could be an entire episode of NXT if they just let yeah, these yeah. guys really it go. Good. It could. And then we got flashing images uh, this time with some glimpses of Killer Cross, uh, although his name was never said. And then the screen went to black, and NXT went off the air. Does that cool. guarantee? Does that guarantee that Cross gets involved in the finish of this match? Hmm. Or does that guarantee that we see him after this match? Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, why does it have to have anything to do with this match? Because it interrupted. It interrupted. Uh, I'm just asking. I don't yeah. Know. You know why? Why does the video interrupt now? I don't know. Just wondered. No, it definitely feels like this is like you know the fact that Triple H said you know okay when do you want it and Gargano said two weeks and he's like all right I will put a ring I will put a, a camera and I will put a referee for you and this does feel like an unsanctioned I'm not responsible for you guys just to freaking kill yourselves and get this over with. I, I liked like it. I yeah. did like it. It was good. Um, so that's how we ended NXT tonight. Uh, we've got some super chats to get to, but first, Matt, final thoughts on NXT. Very good, very good episode. It's not better than AEW, is all. <laughs> Justin, same. <laughs> Nothing else I can okay. say. Uh, Stephen Marcuccioli saying Cole versus Dream Backlot Brawl. Uh, Jay Lane saying, does Riddle have any chance once Vince gets him? I don't think Vince seems particularly interested in him, given how Riddle has ru rubs people the wrong way on the main roster. I'll bet you Vince don't like him, if anything. 
Yeah, he probably sees him as like the next Enzo in terms of egos. Or just annoying. Like, what is this? Who does this guy think he is? Fucking with Brock Lesnar like this. And we don't need Brock walking around here pissed off about things. I don't know. I can simple as simple as that. Uh, DMP Games is saying that Gargano versus Ciampa sounds like a loser leaves NXT match. Um, and we'll then, yeah, and then uh, Peter Bahi with two bucks saying, Justin, any chance CSR will return? Eh, never say never, but I think uh, I, I, I ended it when I wanted to, the way we wanted to. So there you have it. Um, so Justin, what else do we got here? Give us some quick news hits so we can uh, wrap this up. Yeah, well, so uh, it's on the site right now. Uh, basically, they are um, they've been working all week to get WrestleMania in the can. They started taping matches as early uh, um, uh, as early as earlier this week, but then but the main two nights are supposedly are being filmed today, as in Wednesday, and tomorrow, as in Thursday, depending on when you're listening to this podcast. So, um, WrestleMania in theory, by the time we get to Friday, their matches will be in the can. And uh, I've heard, I, I've heard, I, I can't. It's not enough that we're not reporting on Wrestle on, on Wrestling Inc. But like I've heard that there's possibility of them even trying to maybe film multiple endings just to avoid spoilers getting out from the closed set, which is like the movie thing that we've talked about. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, WrestleMania is being taped as we as we speak right now, uh, and and not just at the Performance Center, but supposedly also at Full Sail where they did NXT the night. Um, and whether we see any other locations, uh, we will have to wait and find out, like everybody else, in a week and a half. There you go. Anything else? Nope. Okay. He is Matt Morgan at BP Matt Morgan on the Twitters. Uh, he's at oh, Christ. Uh, he's at Justin Labar. I'm at Glenn Rubenstein. Uh, we'll see you back here Friday night to talk about SmackDown. I don't even know what's happening on SmackDown this week. Oh, the Firefly Funhouse returns. So until then, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane. We'll catch you back.